I can't go in and then be wet and standing here freezing. I think it's going to blow over there. Oh, yeah. That's pretty refreshing. <laughs> Jesus Christ, let's go. <laughs> Hello, my name is Stuart here at Hobby King. You join me on this gorgeous evening to present to you a V2 of a firm classic and favorite of all the Avios customers out there. This is the Avios V2 Albatross. Now, why the Albatross? Well, like many of the V2s that have, uh, we've released up to date, we do V2s of only the most popular models here at Hobby King and um, certainly, the Albatross is right up there in terms of its popularity. Um, very, very good model as a V1. Nice scheme, unusual subject, and uh, all around pretty good indeed. But there was definitely some room for improvement. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just uh, run off the, uh, the changes that we've made to this V2 to make it what, it what you see here in front of me now. And then we're at this beautiful lake here near our club in the Netherlands. And we're gonna give you a flight demonstration of it on the water and then towards the very end of the video, because the majority of you won't be able to fly off water all the time, uh, we'll show you it flying off of grass. Okay, so changes on the V2. Well, obviously the most noticeable thing is the new scheme. This is a really, really stunning US Coast Guard scheme with the uh, brilliant white and red and, and blue there. Really, really nice, standout, popular scheme. I'm sure many of you will adore this scheme. Now, not only is this scheme a nice high-vis scheme, but it has some other benefits that work into the uh, improvements that the V2 uh, enjoys. What you see here in the white, and this is not painted white foam, this is just white foam, brilliant white foam. So what we've done here, we've, able, we've been able to reduce the all up weight of the model, which just translate directly into better handling performance and also slow flying performance. With, that's one of the things I noticed with the V1. It could fly slow, but pretty much only with at least mid flaps uh, dialed in. Now with the V2 being that much uh, lighter, you can actually get it to a really nice slow flying speed without the use of flaps and then take it that much further with a little bit more flaps, uh, uh, with, with flaps uh, dialed in. So that's part of the benefit of this stunning new scheme. Not only that, the plastics uh, that are around the model have been color matched to the scheme as well. So there's no odd plastic parts sticking out and looking a bit odd in the color scheme. Uh, speaking of which, you'll also notice the uh, water rudder there. This is a tip that we actually got from the community. We picked up on that, that um, people uh, fitted it with, uh, replaced the black plastic rudder with a clear one. Although it's still noticeable, it's definitely less noticeable than the original on the V1. Speaking of visibility, uh, the more eagle-eyed amongst you will notice that the cockpit is now clear. So that enables you to uh, put some pilots in there and give a little more detail if you wish, and just overall adds to the, uh, the, the really nice scale look of this um, 1600 millimeter albatross. Um, one point I also wanna make in terms of weight, what we've also been able to do is reduce the electronics inside in terms of the excessive wire. The, the V1 worked very, very well, but it had a little too much wire, so we reduced the electronic wire. Not only does that reduce weight, it also reduces electronic noise or the potential for electronic noise. So all around the V2, it is a much neater affair as well. Uh, in terms of assembly, it, it assembles exactly uh, pretty much exactly as the uh, the V1 does. What I'm showing you here, and this is what I did on the V1 that I flew as well last year, if you remember that video, the the way that I've mounted the receiver, and this is how we're recommending it, to, recommending that you mount the receiver now, it's actually underneath the wing, uh, directly mounted onto the wing, because all you've got is your rudder and your elevator servo in the fuselage. So you can just uh, connect those with extension leads. It's very, very easy. So absolutely, as you're seeing in this footage here, this is how we recommend you install your uh, receiver. Other than that, it's plug and fly. So you do just have to add your receiver. It's got the Aerostar reversing ESCs, same motors, same props as before, same ESCs as before. And then battery wise, it's flying uh, on the same uh, three to 4,000 milliamp hour 4S. But because it's that much lighter, you can actually go for a much bigger battery. I've flown up to a 6,000 milliamp hour. And what I'm gonna do now is demonstrate that to you. You can see here, I've got my, this is a 3300 that you can see in there, 3300 4S. 
And notice that I've got it in a much different location to how we recommended on the V1. Again, that's to do with that weight difference and uh, weight distribution that's different on the V2 over the V1. It means you need the battery a lot more forward to attain the CAG. Uh, uh, what that does mean is though, you can fly with a heavier pack right in the middle there and get really, really long flight times. This is a 4S, you can also fly on a 3S just as well. I've been flying very, very scale on a 3S 5000 milliamp hour pack and getting well over 15 minute flight time with mixed throttle use. So there it is, there's the, the V2, a model that you all know and love, the Albatross. This is a V2, it's just that much better. Um, we're gonna put it on the water now, got some glorious lights, really nice setting, the wind has died down and uh, we'll show you in its element as a float plane. And again, a little later on, there'll be a little bit of footage of it flying off grass, which you can do very easily too. So without further ado, let's get on with the flight review for the V2 Avios Albatross. All right, so pretty much in keeping with the very relaxed flying theme of the Albatross, the sun is out. I take my boots off, pull my trousers up, and we're on this beautiful dock out, out here on the lake. We're gonna turn it on and give you the flight review. Now, you'll have to excuse that I am flying on an old Tyrannus that Hobby can use to sell, simply because I'm a little bit lazy and I already had the V1 set up on this. So uh, I knew that it was good to go uh, with the exact same settings for the V2, and indeed it was. So if you already have a V1, you don't have to worry about settings, they're exactly the same. So the radio is on and I will just show you guys again. Can you see that, can you see that there? All good? So again, that is the uh, 3300 Turnagy uh, Heavy Duty 4S. That's its position. And that gives me the right balance point that I like. Also, one thing that you may not know, and I discovered myself, if you need to access the ESCs, there is a magnetic hatch just there. Good giving really nice direct access to the ESC should you need to access that for whatever reason. So I've got differential set up on this. I've got reverse uh, set up on this and we're gonna put it on the water now in its element. It is of course a flying boat. Here we go. There she goes. Oh, model's a little more graceful than I. I didn't turn it on. No, 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 no. Oh no. <laughs> oh. Baby, come back for the bye 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 bye. How's it, how's it moving? Oh, I was so close. <laughs> I, didn't, I, didn't, like, I didn't turn that guy down. Model on. Oh. Can you reach it with a reach or something? What's the wind doing? I have to wait for the wind. Yeah, looks like it. Uh. As if I did that. Didn't connect it. Oh, yeah, that's pretty refreshing. <laughs> Jesus Christ, let's go. <laughs> Never put your model in the water without turning the battery on first. Oh, God, that's cool. Okay, little life lesson in RC then. If you're flying from water, be sure you turn the model on before you put it in the water. Unlike I just did, uh, you'll, you'll notice that my hair is a little wet and you would have seen from that footage, I had to take a swim because I did exactly that. So excited to fly the V2 was I that I just put it in the water without plugging the battery in. The battery is in now, we have power. We also have an onboard camera. Got our run cam on there. And we're gonna take it out into the water, do the flying. Um, this is on the 3300 3S, uh, sorry, 3300 4S, my mistake. I'll show you some uh, water handling first, then we'll take it up and do it proper. I've got differential set up at the moment. You can see it turning with differential. And now if I turn differential off, this is without differential. It's a little uh, less authoritative, but you just need a bit more power. You can still, still, it's actually turning quite well, even without the differential. But on, as I've got it, I do like to have differential. So I'll put that on now. And then of course, you also have, if you need it, reversing, which I'll show you. 
There she comes. Very handy feature when you're on the water, if you get stuck on the other side of the river, for example. All right, so we're gonna show you a little bit of ground handling. The key thing with this, uh, before I take off, I'll just show you it getting on step, is not to just apply a lot of power uh, and just you know, hope that it gets into the air. You pretty much don't need to touch it apart from applying power, only a little bit of power, just to the point where it gets on step and you can level the wing. So right now, I'm just doing aileron. Now, virtually at that point, before I uh, cut the power, I would have been uh, ready to rotate. So you want, I'll show you again downwind. You want to get it onto power, just to get it on step, and then you just control it with ailerons, pretty much. You get that wing level, then you pull up. Because if you're going really, really fast and that wing's not level, and one of those floats catches in the water, you might spin out. All right, so I've got it lined up pretty much into wind. Remember, apply power, let it get on step, control the ailerons, keep the wing level. No flaps, and just ease up on the elevator. Oh, <laughs> look at that. Now keep a nice steady climb out like that. What that enables you to do, is, uh, or uh, uh, to happen, is for the water to drain off the model completely, just to get rid of any excess weight. Put a bit of wind there in the turn, nose went a little high. Look at this coming by. How's that looking? Very nice. Really, really nice. Bit in the sun there. It's a, definitely a far more high-vis scheme than the V1. That red and white really stands out, especially against the blue. If I come over this side here, I think you'll really be able to see it. I'm cruising at about a third throttle now. How's that looking? Got it. Getting a little bit of wind shear off the top of the trees here. That is the problem sometimes when you're flying from a lake that's not completely open, especially when there is some wind about. Downwind now, turning it in. Now, the sun is pretty much getting exactly where I don't want it. How's that looking on camera? It looks great. Okay, bit more power in the turn there. Bring it in for a low pass. This is about a third throttle, no flaps. Get it really, really nice, really nice and slow. All right, now full power. This is for us, remember. That's completely non-scale. Hammer head off the top there. But it's a sports scale model, so it looks like a real plane, um, but it can be very sports aerobatic. And whilst we're up here, we're gonna get into that straight away. So I'm on low rates now. First of all, we're gonna do a loop. Ready? Full power into loop. Bags of power into that. How's that looking? Nice. Want another or are you good? Well, another one's always good. Okay, well, first of all, I'm gonna bring it around again. So it doesn't even need to be full power. So I'm at mid throttle now, level into wind, easing up on the elevator, round, 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 ease off, a little bit overly, come out, applying the elevator back into low rates there on the uh, elevator. So that's a basic loop, which of course most models can do. Full-size Albatross would not have been able to do, or it could have done, but I never saw one and I never heard of one doing it. Coordinate again in the turn. It's getting a little bit pushed there in the wind on the side, but that's okay. I'm gonna put a little bit of flap on at this point. Definitely coordinate the turn here as I turn in. Let's see how slow we can get it. This is at just above cruising speed, or well, just above a third, mid-flap, look at that. Just kissing the water, applying the power, and that's a half-power climb out. Flaps are now retracted. Beautiful. Full flaps. Now, diving it in, you've got to be ready to catch it on the elevator, up elevator, and a bit of power, otherwise you'll slap down, and now a bit of power, and then cut the power. Quite a short landing. Not really the, my preferred way of landing, but if you're in a tight spot and you need to, it can absolutely do it. Let's go full power now, once we're up in, oh. See, that's something you gotta look for. Okay, I'm only human, I don't mind showing you mistakes. That was what I was on about earlier. Show you a little bit of the water handling here. If you apply too much power too quickly, and then it gets caught on that float, you will spin a bit. So you've gotta gradually, I listen to my own advice now, gradually apply the power, let the wing get level, and then he's off the elevator. There we go. As soon as you told Stuart and things go much, much better. Hammer head off the top there. Let's try another uh, a long scale approach now. Now with these approaches, as long as it can be, because I have to turn in a bit, you want to keep the power on and fly it onto the water basically. So let's see, give him a bit of power, bit of power and you fly onto the water. Try not to stop. 
me do another touch and go. Look at that uh, ground handling, really, really nice. Again, no flaps, a little bit of up elevator, and away she goes. Of course, it's got differential thrust, so if you want to be stupid, you can really get it into some silly situations. I'll do another one here, coming around, are you ready? Full power, I'm gonna pop up, and silliness ensues, but it pulls out of it very, very nicely. Yeah, I've definitely got the differential on there. So it's got a little bit of for everyone. The, uh, the Albatross, it's a sports scale model, like I said, look at that, really nice. Oh, that's it's better coming from that way, it's a shame it's downwind. All right, let's see if I can get the silkiest of smooth landings. Got to make sure I keep the power on, fly into the landing, gradually reduce speed, and then just pick up a little bit of throttle. Go up. Yes. That was a nice landing. Nice. That was hard on the differential rudder right there to bring it in. Look at the ground handling of this thing. As as, uh, the water handling, as soon as you get it on step, you can really scoot it around nicely. A lot of the fun actually with the Albatross is just running around on the water. There we go. Really, really plain and nicely. Don't go too hard on the rudder, it will spin in when you get to speed. Look at it there, look at the wake there, it's beautiful. Oh, there's something so, so charming about flying, flying off of water. Especially when you've got the sun setting, you've got a great flying model such as this. I'll do one more take, I'll bring it into land, and then we'll wrap up the flight review on the water. And do it with a flap takeoff. So this is now with flap. It just gets all airborne that much uh, quicker. So if you're in a tight flying space, maybe you've got a little pond somewhere in the back of back of your field, the albatross can definitely do that. And with that in mind, we're going to do a short landing again here. So I'm going to bring it in high and dive it in. Full flaps now, full flaps. Dive it in, dive it in, and just lift up the nose at the last minute. There. That's the short landing nice. I wanted to show. Really, really nice. And you see the full flaps down now. Coming in, here we go. Look at that, just beautiful. Such a charming, charming model. You can really see now here the effect of that clear canopy. Now, I'm going to get a little bit back. I've got a cell checker here. I'm going to do myself a little summer treat, as I've already been in the water once. Might as well go in again. There we go. Whew. It's still cold. Okay, so that was the V2 Albatross. I am, I'm now remember I reset my timer. This is the, oh, this is, this is cold. October is cold in the Netherlands to be in the water. Right, the battery is now unplugged, so I am gonna hold on quite firmly to this model. I do not want a repeat of going in there. And I've done a really good job of the, uh, the Velcro strap on this one. Okay, holding on to the model. 3300 turn of GHD. Oh, it's so cold around my ankles. Oh, I've already reset the timer and it's now, uh, well look, it's a minute. Uh, it's just under two minutes. If I reset my timer again, seven minutes, seven minutes. What's that, 14, 12, oh, it's too cold. 12 minutes, oh, oh that's so cold. Oh, I'm getting quite old. That's uh, 12 minutes on the 3300 30, 4S. You can get a little longer uh, with a bigger pack, of course. Glorious, glorious V2 Albatross. Now lighter, flies that much uh, slower, as you can see. Handling is still great. It's got the reversing ESCs. Very striking scheme that I'm sure you can really appreciate in this light. Well, at least I hope you can. Okay, so that about wraps it up for the flight review of the Avios US uh, Coast Guard V2 Albatross. Um, you've seen it flying off of water. That was a quite an adventurous flight review there, but uh, the model certainly handled it just fine. And as promised, I'm going to close that now with a little bit of footage of it flying off the grass for you because we realize that the majority of you will be flying off of grass when flying. It is a little windy, uh, but that doesn't matter. The, uh, the Albatross handles that like a champ. When flying off grass, the water rudder here, it's sprung loaded like that, so you don't need to bother removing the water rudder. It can just stay on as it is, and it flies pretty much like it would off water. So let's close out this video. We're flying off of grass. Please uh, remember to comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you soon for a new release from HobbyKing.com at some point very, very soon in the future.